Hey everyone, welcome back to ThinkTech. So in last video, we saw a coding example for linear regression. And in this video, we'll start a discussion about linear classification. So linear classification is basically a next step from linear regression, where we were trying to regress to a straight line, given all the data points that we had. In linear classification, what we try to do is we try to divide the data set into two different classes right so we will talk about binary classification so we'll have two classes so as you can see in this diagram we have few of the points plotted and the goal is to find out a linear line which will separate these data points into two classes right so let us start by understanding the definition of linear classification linear classification is an machine learning algorithm used to classify data into categories by drawing a linear boundary it uses a linear function to model the relationship between the input features and the target output. Example include logistic regression, SVM and LDA. So basically the point to note here is that it is basically an algorithm that is used to classify data into categories by drawing a linear boundary. And again here, if we talk about a single dimension use case, it will be a linear line. And if we talk about a multi-dimension use case, it will be a linear plane, similar to how we discussed in linear regression. So let us again, as with linear regression, let us understand this also with an hex of an example. So assume we have a data set of cats and dogs, and we want to classify each image as either being a cat or being an image of a dog, right? So uh, we will first, what we'll do is we'll plot that data set into a 2D plane, right? So now images are high dimensional or multi-dimensional data sets. It is difficult to, you know, plot them on a 2D plane, but there are techniques which you can use to plot images on 2D plane. Let us assume that we already know of that technique and we have plotted our uh, data points like these, right? So the red points represent or depict images of dogs and green points depict images of cats. So Given this uh, data distribution, what we have to come up is we have to come up with a linear separator that separates these two classes with the maximum possible accuracy. Now you can see here that in this data set, it is impossible to separate these two data sets 100% accurately by using a linear line because the obvious line that we can see we can draw is this particular line, right? Now. In, if we draw this line for binary classification and we say that whatever is above this line is a dog and whatever is below this line is classified as cat, we will see that there are two points which are incorrectly classified. One is a cat which is ending up in a dog boundary and one is a dog which is ending up in a cat boundary. So this is basically acceptable. Our goal is to come up with a separation which is which gives the best possible accuracy. It might not be always possible given the data set that we are able to completely segregate the data into two different uh, separate classes. Right. So this becomes our classification line or the uh, separation line and this is we basically how we can classify or label the classes on both the sides of the line. So now let us understand the formal definition of linear classification. So in linear classification, the input is a text, uh, is an, uh, a tensor, and it can be a tensor of any dimension, right? It can belong to any dimension, depending on what data set we have at our disposal, and it can be that tensor. The label is uh, a binary label, since we are talking about binary classification. In future videos, we'll also discuss multi-class classification where this can be from 1 to n to k minus 1 depending on the number of classes that you have but in this video we are only discussing about binary classification so the label is only either 0 or 1 parameters here again similar to linear regression is only w and b where w is your weight and b is your biases so the prediction of linear classification is a very hard prediction which basically says that if the classification output which is calculated similarly to linear regression which is the multiplication of the weight vector with the input tensor plus the bias if it is greater than zero then we say that the 
data point belongs to class one and if it is less than zero then or less than equal to zero then we say that it belongs to class zero right so here we see that it's a hard classification it is not a very smooth classification either the output will be zero or it will be one right now what happens in this scenario is that we come across a problem right so let us understand what the problem is so the problem with linear classification is that if the sample space cannot be separated completely using a linear function linear classification is inadequate as a result logistic regression is used logistic regression is basically nothing but a less rigid version of the linear classification and it is used to solve this one particular problem where linear classification if there is no separate uh, boundaries or you cannot separate the data 100% correctly across two boundaries these outliers can have a huge impact on your linear placement of the line right so these outliers as we had in our data set also these outliers can actually influence the placement of this line like a lot right so this is something that we want to avoid and instead of using hard classification of 0 and 1 we want to smooth out these classifications right we want to predict something that is not just two numbers but is over sort of you know uh, spread out or distributed over a range of numbers and that is where linear reg uh, logistic regression is uh, comes into picture logistic regression basically predicts the probability of the output being in a specific category so instead of telling whether it belongs to that category or not it predicts the probability whether that data point belongs to class 0 or class 1 and because of this logistic regression is more tolerant to outliers because outliers will not have a that uh, strict impact or that huge impact on the classification accuracy so how do you smooth out the output right we see that linear classification uses a greater than zero equation to either classify it into one or zero but now what we want to do is we want to smooth out the output of this equation right so this equation is basically the equation of your linear uh, classification now what cl uh, classification was doing was that it was checking whether it is greater than zero or less than zero and then was giving it the class accordingly what we want to use here is we want to use a sigmoid function so sigmoid function what is a sigmoid function it is a mathematical function that is used in logistic regression it basically maps any value right from minus infinity to plus infinity it maps to 0 comma 1 right so it will map any value any real value from minus infinity to plus infinity into 0 and 1 that's why it is very suitable for predicting probabilities because the sum of all the values that it will map will always be equal to 1 right so that is why sigmoid is a function that is used in logistic regression and sigmoid function so basically the definition of sigmoid function is this it is basically sigmoid of x is basically defined as 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus x right this is your sigmoid function so let us see how it looks like so if you plot a sigmoid function this is how the plot will look like you can see that almost after minus 8 sigmoid function is you know a zero and after plus eight sigmoid function is zero it crosses the y-axis at 0 0.5 so it's equal to zero is basically uh, uh, y 0 0.5 so this is how your sigmoid function looks and you can see that all values for all x values from minus infinity to plus infinity the output lies between zero to one so that is why sigmoid function is used and basically gives a more smoother version of your classification rather than being a very hard class uh, okay so now let us talk about the formal definition of logistic regression so in logistic regression again the input is an x tensor it can belong to any degree then output again is either 0 or 1 class but this is not just based on whether the output is greater than or less than 0 it is based on a probability distribution and if the probability is greater than 0 0.5 we classify it as either class 1 or 0 and if this it is less than 0 0.5 then we classify it with the other class parameters here again is w and b which is the weights and biases now this is your prediction equation so this is a little complex equation but let's try to supplement it with the values that you want to calculate for and then see what this equation becomes so let us 
let us assume uh, y being equal to 0 in this case so probability of 0 is if this is 0 so this becomes this part becomes your 1 so it basically is this and probability of 1 if you will calculate is basically this so now the sum of both of these probabilities is 1 which is why sigmoid function is so helpful that you uh, do not have to worry about exploding values or values getting out of hand you know that the sum will always be 1 so you can compare or you know use the difference in these values to predict which class is being preferred more right so if for example this value comes out to be 0.7 this will be 0.3 then you can say that it is highly likely that that point belongs to class 0 right rather than being belonging to class 1 so this is how you can use prediction all of these things we will cover when we cover the coding part of uh, linear classification we will write all these equations by hand and you will get a more better understanding of how you can use those equations but to f if you understand the formally how logistic regression is defined mathematically this is how it is defined and then the loss function the loss that we use here is the negative log likelihood loss loss function right so basically what we have done here is nothing but we have taken the negative log of your prediction right so if you take the negative log of your prediction uh, basically the log, log, log rule says that for multiplication it converts into addition and the powers become your coefficient right so if you take the log of this value what will happen is this term uh, let me use a different color yeah so this term will become one part and this term will become another part and these values will become your coefficient so this is exactly what has happened this part is basically represented via this and this part is being represented here right so we have taken the negative log likelihood and this is the log that we use to uh, basically calculate how good your predictions are because the ultimate goal as we already discussed in linear regression is to reduce the loss now one more thing that you might have observed is we are not talking about the derivation or the differentiation of this loss to come up with an optimization equation so what we did in linear regression was we came up with two different uh, differentiation of the loss function with respect to w and respect to b and we came up with the update equation here this differentiation is a little bit more involved so i will put a separate video discussing mathematically how you can uh, sort of compute the differentiation of this log function and the same thing we will use as uh, an example in our coding exercise one thing that you will uh, what i can do is we can i can basically uh, one thing what i can do is i can write down the differentiation final differentiation and this is something that we can discuss because it is a very interesting result to see so what the derivative of uh, loss function with respect to w basically comes out is the sigmoid of the output minus y hat into x and the derivative of b is sigmoid of the right so now uh, you might wonder that this is exactly similar to what we saw in linear regression in linear regression instead of just sigmoid function what we had was the predicted output right so that is actually the beauty of sigmoid function that its derivation is a very has a very unique property this is something that we'll discuss uh, when we discuss about gradient descent and we uh, formally derive this these two outputs we'll discuss but uh, if you're interested you can go and see what is the uh, property or what is the nice properties that sigmoid function has when it when it comes to uh, derivation right so but this is the result that comes out and this is what we use to update the w and biases just like in linear regression to uh, come up with new weights and new biases which can be used to improve our prediction accuracy further and further till the time we have reached a certain threshold beyond which we do not want to train more and that is when we say that we have reached the maximum possible accuracy for the given data set okay so this is how this is all about 
linear classification we saw why linear classification what linear classification is you can use it to define it into two binary classes we also saw what is a problem with linear classification and therefore why we use a softer version of linear classification called logistic regression so a lot of times people actually get confused between uh, linear classification and logistic regression it is basically the same thing but logistic regression is a simpler or a softer version of linear classification right that is just what you have to keep in mind because instead of using hard boundaries you have used soft probabilities to classify uh, your data points into two different classes right so i think this uh, concludes our discussion about linear classification in the next video what we'll do is we will talk about how you can implement linear classification in python and uh, without using any without using any external library so everything will hand code so that you understand what is the mathematics behind developing or training a linear classification model thank you so much for watching this video please do not forget to like subscribe and press the notification icon so that whenever our next video comes out you get notified and please do not forget to share this video also so that people who want to learn about this can also benefit from these resources thank you so much